they are doing. It was the Father, God our Father which art in heaven, it was the Father who had uh, not just planned but who had written down all that was to take place. More than a thousand years before and uh, being, being written and uh, being brought by the prophets into the hearing at least of, the, of Judas, of, of, of uh, of uh, the Jews over the generations and uh, perhaps you and I marvel how little they believed when it was taking place and uh, we would be, uh, know that uh, in the synagogues of Jerusalem of Bethlehem and uh, north, south, east, west of uh, Israel the prophecies and still are uh, are read and uh, and many who are who are reading uh, and in the hearing in those synagogues cannot yet believe that Jesus Christ is Lord will you and I marvel that you and I believe what many of them cannot does it make our lives and uh, our Christian lives more and more be ye therefore perfect we cannot be that but we would but we know that the longer we strive there was the wrestling during the night for our prayer when Jacob was to be called Israel when you and I when the way that perhaps uh, you and I were once remembered is no longer so it is the doing of the Lord and wondrous in our eyes I think it will take all of eternity for us to really accept why. Why did God choose me? Not that I was worthy of it. Not that I knew how to ask for it. Not that I did anything or said anything that was worthy of it. It pleased God. And those words, uh, Father, forgive them. The the Lord God Almighty God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God the Father then some of the works of his hand as we look at perhaps and as our minister uh, preached last Sabbath the, the awfulness the awesomeness the, the extremity of sinfulness not just uh, how the Roman Empire fell and uh, we believe it was those uh, moral sinfulness that brought the Roman Empire who was greater than them of the four or five empires that went before them they were all together powerful they conquered Israel uh, it was uh, a, the, it was Israel who decided that they wanted Jesus Christ put to death but it wasn't the Israelites uh, it was the Roman soldiers who put who put out who made the suffering to be 
what it was. No wonder they fell. It would appear at times in a world such as the world we're in today that uh, only uh, only ungodliness and uh, the, the, the place that sinfulness and uh, abominations and uh, and the way that that uh, well that we ha- that we heard about the the popularity if you like of sinfulness surely surely it is telling us clearly what deliverance it pleased god made to sinners like us uh, p- p- uh, forgive uh, Forgive means to pardon. You and I uh, know very well what we must be pardoned for. Why do, why do you need pardon? Why do I need pardon? We don't have to be university theologians to know that. God, the Holy Spirit, has made it very, very clear to us. Why we need pardon is because we have sinned against a holy, holy, holy God. And as we heard in all the prayers, the greatest need that we have is Christ. And when we think of the person of Christ, when we think of how far you and I know we fall from perfection, and then we look, we are brought, we are brought to the cross. We are brought to read, and it's in, in, the, uh, in the Matthew, Mark, Luke, what the cross does really mean to us. We needed pardon. We had debts. Maybe in a world today when we when we if we are bold enough to look at the the news that in the world and uh, how our own nation with the nation demanding more and more and more of those who are who are the people who who are the money people of this world, the government, and uh, how the demands, the unhappiness, the rebellions in the streets, not our nation, other nations as well. But here is the debt that Jesus Christ paid for you and I. That the debts, however much, how many billions our national debt is, 25,000 or so, however much that is, but you know and I know what to cancel the debt that we have to God. And the centrality of the payment of that debt is not in pounds and pence and shillings and dollars and etc. It is in the blood of Jesus Christ. The debt is so heavy then that uh, it had It was God's way that, and let us be quite fairly straightforward and honest, if we were not pardoned, if our sins were not cancelled, are you or I brave enough to think, and the world will tell us, we don't need to be a minister to tell us that we've all got to die, but the, 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 the thought of dying without Christ, it is fearsome, isn't it? Not just death, not just, not just punishment, but
but eternity. And it is in Jesus Christ. And all our prayer, though dear brothers who are praying, and each one, it is what, it is the burden that God places on praying men and women as each one of us in this house is tonight. It is a burden, not just for our old souls, but others. Others. Others who are not so caring as you and I are tonight. And there are those physically, mentally, with many forms of sufferings, and Yet, those sufferings can be very, very painful. We'll never be as thankful as God's way of pardoning us. Never. In... Uh, Second Corinthians one, uh, chapter one. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. Father, forgive them. They know not what they're doing. They were so blinded, so blinded by sin, and that's in just S I N. That's nothing more or less than what it was the blindness that sin brings and to and very much we're not judging lest we be judged but a nation like ours and uh, whatever you speak about whatever you try to to, to bring uh, to the ears to people <coughs> don't bring that uh, you, they might, you might even well we know of those who are uh, street uh, street preachers and uh, there's only one, and it's straight to the police station. We're reaching that stage, and we're head-on uh, going into that direction. We ought to be very much at, at, at knowledgeable on where we are standing spiritually in the light of life, in the light of death, in the light of eternity, at this very moment of our lives, each one of us. Uh, and and uh, and t to the Corinthians, then that text that I attempted to quote, the Father of the Father of mercies. We recognise that. We recognise that if He wasn't merciful, you and I wouldn't be where we are tonight. No question of that. The Lord our God says the psalmist is merciful and he is gracious, long-suffering, slow to wrath, in mercy plenteous. Can we recognize ourselves how, how favored we are? More than many, we didn't deserve it, we didn't know how to ask, we didn't know when the Holy Spirit entered into your life and mine, what on earth was happening? We didn't know. Sin had, was blinding us. We didn't know. But we do know now because the love of Christ constrains us for, to thus think that if Christ died for all, then all were dead. That's where he found us. His mercy is forever sure. His truth at all times firmly stood and shall from age to age endure. What is it that doesn't change? Christ's love for sinners like you and I. That has never changed, and it was there before the cross, but the cross of Christ makes it clearer and clearer and clearer. All the blood of goats and of bulls and of rams that were brought to the altar in the Old Testament, that wasn't enough. It had to be 
the blood of Jesus that cleanses from all sin and uh, and to love uh, and to, to, as we know some of our dear brethren like to uh, put a lot of emphasis on the gift of love and that we love one another living members of the living body of the living Christ that we love one another said Jesus as I have loved you and on the cross the second last saying from the cross it is finished perfection the only perfection ever on this earth the life the death the burial the resurrection the glorification of Jesus Christ Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. A brief word of prayer. Help us to pray. Each one of us, we thank thee that we are where we are tonight. My house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. All people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheerful voice. Himself with mirth, his praise foretell. Come ye before him and rejoice. You and I have been so blessed and so been constrained by his love to be where we are. We'll never be as thankful as we'd love to be. And remembering others who would love to be with us in the house of God. And they cannot for one reason or another. More and more and uh, in home families, uh, and some near, some maybe far away, but all our prayers tonight were specific in asking that the kingdom of God would come in the lives, in the souls of loved ones, our own flesh and blood, that, that Christ will be glorified, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. Let us conclude singing his praises in a uh, in Psalm 1, in Psalm uh, 103, in English. In English, Psalm 103. Words, again, as I, as we, I know we know well, and we thank God that we do. Psalm 103, verse 11, verse 11, for as the heaven in its height, the earth surmounted far. Psalm, verse, Psalm 103, verse 11, for as the heaven in its height, the earth surmounted far, so great. To those that do him fear, his tender mercies are. As far as it is from the west, so far hath he from us removed in his love all our iniquity. Such pity as a father has unto his children dear, like pity shows the Lord to such as worship him in fear. Three verses to God's praise for us the heaven in its sight. For as the heaven in his sight the earth surrounded far so great to us that do him fear his tender mercy As far as he 
Son, God the Holy Spirit, one God be with us, all loved ones everywhere, now, forevermore. Amen.